See, we've got the electricity running through here. It's all set up with water, electricity, and ventilation. There we go. All right. All right, we got fans out the back for exhaust, fans in the front. Um, got the lights run through the top. There we go. Uh, there's a bin of food back there. Holds about 150 pounds of food, that one bin. All right, now these are the Freedom Breeder holding tubs. These things hold eh, probably a couple hundred. I mean, they'll hold more, but we only stack about a couple hundred in there, tops. I'll show you one right now. We never overcrowd any of our bins here. That's about as much as you'll see in bins. I mean, plenty of floor space. Uh, we cleaned about once every five days. This here was cleaned about, I think maybe two, three days ago. Um, we cleaned the entire bin, all, or the entire room, I guess, all at once. So here we go, everything's marked, you know, females, males. Uh, we've got breeders and whatnot. I mean, every, everyone. This one's got a little bit more in there, but you can still see nothing's ever overcrowded. We've got every color of rat from the browns, whites, grays, tans, everything. Um, again, these are all for uh, for uh, holding as well as raising up, you know, different size rats to to meet different sizes. And uh, over here we've got, well, these are some other breeding tubs. All these black tubs here on the left side, these are all our breeding tubs. We keep about uh, maybe 12 to 15 females per bin with one male. Um, that's our breeding. We've got a bunch, as you can see. They're all on wheels. They roll out pretty easy. Let me, some of them are difficult to open. Let me open up an easy one to open. All right, this one's pretty easy to open. Here we go. So we've got about, like I said, 15. This one probably looks like it has a little more, maybe 16, 17 females with, with one male. Um, and this was actually cleaned uh, seven days ago. So you can see it's still pretty pretty clean it's not too dirty but we clean these once so mm, seven to ten days so this one's pretty much ready to clean um, and on this other side here's here's our uh, exhaust fans like I was showing you um, back here we've got a pressure regulator this we've got water coming in from outside and the water is extremely pressurized so we go we run it through a regulator here which controls the PSI and uh, that way we can feed it through these little little tubes here which run all the way across this top here. We got shut off valves, we shut off each one. Uh, we usually put about two to three racks on each each line there. We've got lines throughout the whole setup here, as you can see. Uh, and again, the uh, lights up top. Let me show you another bin here, since we're down here. There we go. All, all these animals are pretty pretty much uh, pet quality. I mean, they're tame. And, uh, I actually do get a lot of people just coming here for pets for themselves, as opposed to snake food. Uh, and then we got the filter here, which is always clean. Real nice and clean. That runs, all the water runs through that filter before it gets through all the, all the, uh, the valves here. So, and this whole left side, or actually our right side of our building here, this is the nursery, we call it. Um, this is where we put the pregos. Whenever we, about once every day, every other day, we look through the, all these black tubs for any, any signs of uh, pregnant females. Um, move them over to this side. We put one, we put about two to three tops. Usually we put two females per bin because they like to share litters and they help each other out in the, with the nursing. Uh, let's see if you've got some pellets plus Plus shavings. The shave. The pellets are for <clears throat> for just general bedding. These things expand, you know, tremendously. But then the uh, shavings on top of that we put for for bedding. This is just straight for for nesting. It helps the, the bombs out and stuff. And of course they've all got their mound of food on top and, and their water. And uh, it stays relatively really really warm in this in this uh, building. Outside it's winter. Well, it's just about winter now, and it's probably 50 out out there right now. In here. Uh, it feels like I'd say 70s. Um, let's see. Um, I was going to show you a thermometer there, but it's broken. Just dropped it a few days ago. Um, but yeah, it's about like 70 in here now. 
Um, I think that's about as cold as it gets, maybe high 60s. But uh, in the, in, also in the summertime, the highest will, it'll get in here, even when it's about 110, 115 outside, we've got about 92, 95, I think was our max ever. Um, and we put, of course, other additional fans for additional ventilation and that works out great. We don't lose much out here at all. Um, winter, we, we plug up these holes here in the front, as you can see here. Usually these, are, these, these windows are completely open in the summer and we just throw in some three inch thick insulation to plug up the holes with a little bit of room up top um, to keep the ventilation coming through. Uh, and that's actually about it. Let me actually, let me show you guys some, uh, some babies here. There we go. There's some uh, mama with her little pups here. Those are actually wean now. When they're a little bit bigger than wean is when we take them out and then we distribute them over to these big holding bins and then we raise them up for uh, various sizes. A lot of people buy smalls and mediums for their ball pythons and whatnot. But uh, we, we, we leave them with the mom until they're able to eat on their own just fine. And this is just about the right size. So uh, that's as dirty as you'll see a tub on this side because they've been in there since, since uh, being born. So another one. I'll show you guys some little babies. Here we go. Here's some newborns here. See how nice and clean that mama loves their little nest here. There we go. Little babies. There's only one mama in here now. Um, usually, like I said, we usually have two mamas per, per bin because they share. They share the responsibility, which is great. Here we go, here's two moms. That one hasn't dropped yet, but she's definitely a prego. Let's check her out. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> so, she's gonna drop soon and they'll help each other out. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, pretty much the same stuff. So, that's about it. So I wanna take you guys back uh, behind the scenes of what a large-scale rodent breeding operation looks like. This is what it takes. Now, what it takes to maintain and keep all this going is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of cleaning, and <laughs> a lot of money, believe it or not. I mean, there, there, there's some good money to be made here, but the uh, most of your money, most of your expenses are gonna be in the, uh, the, the food. Because we buy four tons at a time, and that's we buy straight from the milling company, and that's their uh, their minimum. Their minimum order is four ton, and that's just a lot of food. Uh, I believe there's 60 bags per per uh, pallet, and we have, we have to get four pallets, so it's a lot. That's uh, 240 bags. A lot of labor just moving the bags off the truck when it comes out, and then stacking it. But it's just it's ridiculous. Um, that's where your biggest expense is, though. In uh, in the, the bedding, you know, we we, we buy this pellet type bedding um, this stuff right here like I said a little bit goes a long way it expands tremendously um, the, the brand we use is American Eagle for the for the bedding and the pellets oh, I'm sorry the uh, the feed we go through a milling company like I said it's down in uh, Goshen Goshen which is near Fresno California uh, I believe their OH Cruise is the name if you guys want to go there uh, and if, if you're local at least they have really good pricing, um, but again, it's a four-ton minimum order, and you have to have a business. So uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, show you the outside again, real quick. You see a tarp we threw over the top. We just haven't uh, pulled it out, but this tarp is so huge it covers the entire 40 foot plus an extra 20 feet past 40 feet, um, and then it covers both bins and extends out maybe about, uh, I'd say eight feet on each side. Well, that's it everybody. I hope you enjoyed the tour, but stay tuned as we're gonna take you behind the scenes of many large scale breeding operations. And of course, I hope you're enjoying yourself at reptilegeeks.com.